living in Silicon Valley, or maybe more importantly, living in the Bay Area or Northern California, where our <laughs> where our latitude is, um, it's easy to forget that the whole world doesn't have the same weather you're having or the same weather I'm having, and we live in a town um, that the 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 slogan of the town is. Um, climate best by government test. Uh, literally, the government did a, uh, a research project in the 30s to figure out which which part of the country and which part of our country, the United States specifically, had the best climate out of anywhere, uh, even anywhere in the world, and it turned out to be uh, Redwood City, the town that I live in. So literally, this the, the weather that we have here is, is pretty spectacular. It was 80s last week, uh, we were at the beach, it was just amazing. And it just reminds me how the experience that we're having, we kind of assume everyone's having that experience. So the East Coast of the United States is getting slammed with <laughs> cold weather, snowstorms, all this stuff that's not happening here. Of course, we get earthquakes, and we had an earthquake two weeks ago. And of course, I was gone that night, and Burgess emailed me or texted me. And the earthquake was actually only about a mile from our house. So, you know, no no free lunch here. But this just reminds me how, like, we humans, when we're in our own circumstances, we, we tend to think everyone's in that circumstance. And that leads me to really thinking about investing and how when people invest and they start actively investing, they, they really focus in on their circumstances and they let their brain get the best part of them. So I want to kind of step back uh, because I'm putting a training together that will be coming out in the next two weeks that I wanted to give a little peek into the training. Um, and that's the theme of this weekend's podcast, plus, of course, an update. Hey, everybody, this is RC Peck, and this is my weekend podcast. And the theme for this weekend is the only two things that matter. So any person who's ever researched what really works in the stock market has come has come back with two major uh, insights and only two not five not ten not fifteen not one but two and I want to just give you a little reminder of what those two th kind of um, feedback loops are that researchers find when they look into the investment world and they track back a hundred years or two hundred years and they're looking for what really works in the stock market and so I want to share what those two things are with you and how it can impact you so this this first image we're looking at is and there's a lot of stuff on here so I apologize but you see a red squiggly line which is the S&P 500 and you see a blue straight line that then starts getting all squiggly after the vertical green line. And basically what you're seeing here is market probability strategy, which is a strategy of mine that I created in the 90s, starting here with the red line and going to the green line, market probability strategy was in cash. It was literally out of the stock market. And that was from the beginning of 2008 to August of 2009. Now, the reason I show you this is because the red line, which is the S&P, during that exact same 19-month period, the S&P fell all the way down here, but from red vertical line to green vertical line, it fell 27 percentage points, while market probability started out at zero and ended at zero. So it didn't make any money, it didn't lose any money, and then at the green line, market probability got everyone back into the stock market, and then it moved up. The point of me showing you this is, one of the two major kind of research findings of people who look at what really works in the stock market is number one, always manage your losses so you never take a big loss. And every outlier great investor, whether it's Carl Icahn or David Einhorn or Kyle Bass or Dennis Rich or Ray Dalio or um, – Warren Buffett, it doesn't matter who the person is, people you don't even know, whether they trade currencies or commodities or stocks or they're day traders or swing traders, every single one of them that is very good at what they do, that beats the market, they all manage their losses. They all have some sort of stop loss system in place so they never lose big. So the first thing I learned when I researched the world of the stock market investing is, oh, managing 
your losses is 10 times more important than managing your gains. And in fact, those who do really well, they put 10 times the effort and energy and time and attention into managing losses. So that's a huge takeaway, 10 times the amount into managing losses than to managing gains. So that was the first thing I learned when I researched the investment world, that it's all about managing losses. And that's part of where the market probability strategy came to be, and it's been implemented over the last 18 years. Now, as far as where the stock market is today, the U.S. stock market has broken out to new lifetime highs. It is continuing to move higher. Mid caps are continuing to move higher. Technology stocks via the NASDAQ are continuing to move higher. Almost everything is moving higher from an equity base, and that's, that's a good sign when we have that broad base of investments moving higher. Gold is moving down right now, and I think will. I, I, again, I still think it's going to hit $1,000, so we have stepped aside from that. Oil is looking for its foundation. It's kind of bouncing around the $50 mark, figuring out if it should drop down into the high 30s or 30s or not. And I, I think we have kind of a 50-50 on that happening. So we're just kind of watching and seeing what happens. Um, and actual interest rates are coming up a little bit right now. And I think that is more a fact that the stock market is going higher and people are putting money back into the stock market than really anything else. Of course, um, the European Central Bank wants people to put more money in the stock market and buy more physical assets so they can actually get inflation over there in the Eurozone. Now, the second thing I learned was very simple. It has to be a passive approach. You cannot actively beat the stock market. Now, this kind of goes counter to what I just said with the stop losses, but the two things I learned was one was you have to manage your losses, and if you manage your losses, you absolutely can beat the stop. You absolutely can beat the stock market. But the other is you have to definitely have a more passive approach to growing money in the stock market. And this is why the obvious trend index, yes, it's 15 individual stocks that have already won that when we purchased them were hated. All right, but it's very passive. There's very little activity. Same thing with market probability. There's very little activity to it. And if you look at the screen here, this is back from the, the, the end of 2000. The blue line is market probability strategy using a 2x strategy. And the red is the S&P 500. And you can see very, very, very passive. The only time action would have been taken from the end of 2000 to today would have literally been here when we went into cash and then got out of cash. So there's two actions, then gone back into cash, gotten out of cash. So there's a total of four actions and then gotten into cash and gotten out. So basically over 15 years, it would have been six signals you would have had to take care of. Now, to me, that's pretty passive. That's not a lot of activity. You're not getting in and out each day, week, month, or even year, but it's very passive. And I'll talk more about this in my training that I have coming up, how it's the combination of having a passive approach and managing losses. And this is why the newsletter industry will never actually be able to help people other than have them feel like they're increasing their status in life because they have better stories to tell to their friends and to their club. And I'm not just being sarcastic or cynical, but really all that active trading back and forth, and I believe this, that is not the way how one grows their wealth through time. It has to be passive and you have to manage your losses. So there's a little bit of action in there. And I don't believe you should just kind of you know, surrender and collapse into the beliefs of the big box advisors and the conventional advisors and believe that you should always, 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 always have your money in the market. That is very dangerous. And I do believe, and there, it's not just my own belief, that there's probably one more, if not two more, 50% drops in front of us. I was listening to an interview with Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard, and he said we probably have two 50% drops in front of us before we hit 2020. <laughs> That's more dire than I even believe. I think we only have one in front of us before we hit 2020 in the next five years. So the takeaway, what is the takeaway? A passive approach, it's not newsletters, but it's a more passive approach with managing losses. And if you do that, you actually have less effort and you have to put less attention into growing your money and your money grows much better. And the other thing is you just get better returns. 
I know it sounds weird because you're putting less effort and time and energy and attention into growing your money, but that's actually needed because the human brain is so bad at growing money. It is so bad, and that's why you need to step aside and let a proven system um, manage and grow your money. Hey guys, this is just another step in helping you secure your portfolio and your future. Until next time, this is RC Peck.